And then, you know. Get the call? I'd get the call about two hours later that he was in town. And that was kind of the way you you worked. And then I knew he was, uh, my life was his for the next few months. And then just as suddenly as he came into town, he would leave. I'd drag myself in to for another session, put the coffee pot on, and they'd say, pack it up, he's gone, so. Did you feel special professionally that he wanted to work with you, even though he was you know, standoffish and quiet and aggressive? Did I, no. I mean, yeah, kind of, but. I mean, I would, if Prince had me on anything or any of that person of that caliber, I would feel like, you know, I feel very special to be here. Yeah, but isn't that kind of a cognitive you know, dissidents because he, you know, he kind of would treat you like shit, but he always requested you. So what's that? You know, I guess that goes back to the answer he gave you. You're here for a reason. Yeah. But there was never, I mean, he was mean. He could be mean. So on that subject, a couple things. If he's mean, you said before, like in the studio, you saw really creative and you also saw crazy. You said he wasn't crazy, but... I want to know what constitutes as crazy in the studio. <laughs> well, there, there's a lot of things. Like I was working with him when he got booed off the stone stage. Oh, yeah. You know, that would, you know, he got shit thrown at him, you know. Um, and that was pretty bad. That would humiliate you. And he was somebody who didn't didn't share his feelings. So when he was upset, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of just had to guess or get out of his get out or try to stay out of his way. And I remember one time he came in, we were working on the time and you could always hear his boots through the courtyard. And I'd have the door open, I could hear his boots and Clicking. I could tell yeah. by the way he was walking. <laughs> and I looked out and I went, oh. he had no shirt on, which he never did. He had those pants that buttoned on the side and yeah. two buttons were undone. He had a bandana tied around his head and one around each knee. And I went, oh, <laughs> fuck. He came in with an attitude that he, he it was literally all day long. He wrote me just nasty comments about white people didn't have any rhythm and hustle it up, you know, and just oh, on and on and on. And I remember it was um, Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam. And Jimmy looked at me and it was like, oh, so sorry, but so glad it's not one of us. Because he could just pick somebody up and, you know, pick them out and just all day long. And he wasn't really horrible to me. I know some of the stuff that he said to Susan was really bad and other people. But um, I found out later that somebody, not me, but somebody had lost one of the time tapes. And he was furious. Oh, really? Do you remember that? that No. And I don't know who it was. And it wasn't me, but I got the brunt of that attitude Mm. that day. And then he could be really sweet. He'd come in and say, let's go see a movie. And I'd say, oh, no, you go ahead. I'll be fine here. And he'd say, Peggy, I got us a limo. And it's like, what? Yeah, so. What did you go see? Oh, it was Diva. It was a, you know, here it is. I'm sitting here. He's he's all dressed with a hat and a, you know, three-piece suit and black (laughs) lace out of his pocket. And I've got jeans and T-shirt on. I'm riding in this huge stretch limo. It's like, oh, my God. You know, and then he sent for me to go on the road with him. You know, I mean, do you remember that? No, to do sound? No, it was um, it was a 1999 tour. Uh-huh. And I think he was an oddity, you know, the way he dressed. He performed in the studio. He didn't just, you know, I mean, he performed and danced and stuff in the studio. So I think because he was different and he could read that on my face, You know, maybe he wanted me to know who he really was. So he sent for me. It was a Christmas present. He sent for me to come out on the road on the 1999 tour over New Year's Eve in Houston and Dallas. And I was I got to stand up at the at the sound, you know, with Cubby, Mm -hmm. which is the best place in the house for a sound engineer. Sure. And um, watch him perform. I had never seen him perform. Oh, that was the first time. I had never seen him perform. Oh. And I was completely blown away. All made sense then? It did make sense. Uh-huh. He okay. literally made me go like this. It was like, oh my God. And that was at the top of his game. Yeah, that was yeah. 1999. Yeah. And he was playing to his people too. I mean, that, 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 the energy in those crowds were amazing. Wow. 
So yeah, that was that was quite a treat. I have a question from the 1999 album DMSR. You're credited with with background vocals, mm-hmm. so you did sing on that. Mm-hmm. Is that him forcing you to do it, or of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> you will do it. Yeah. Yes. Was that in this room as well? No, it was in two. Okay. And it was Jamie. It was Jamie. Oh, what was her name? It was his two managers. Cavall oh. Ruffalo. Yeah, but it was it wasn't them. It oh, was gotcha. the girl. It was Carol McGovney and Jamie. What was the Jamie's last name? I don't remember. I, remember. I want to say Star, but that was no, that was him. <laughs> yeah, that was him. <laughs> anyway, we were out there singing. Uh-huh. Just because he wanted a female vocal right on the spot there, and, and... probably laugh at us. Yeah, because white people don't have any rhythm. I always thought that was funny because he had a white drummer. <laughs> you know, it's like. Hmm. He did one time. He it was it was a Friday or Saturday night, and I think he had Jesse Johnson with him, and um, he wanted me. I think it was 1999 because it was Studio Two, and he wanted me to put some oratones out there, and they brought these little girls in, and he wanted to see if they could, if his music was danceable. I think that that was the premise on the uh, what they came in here. See for. if they could dance to it. Yeah. They were really cute, little short skirts, you know, cute little girls. And um, anyway, I set up the speakers and they started dancing to his music. And th- these guys were making fun of him. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he said, go out there and dance, Peggy. And I said, yeah, right. <laughs> no fucking nope. way. I mean, if I tap, if I did this to some of his songs and how could you not, he would turn around and go... <laughs> So I just sat there kind of like, okay, so yeah, you didn't, you didn't feel his music well, in front of him. That was one of the things that he did sometimes in shows. There's videos, you see him, he'll be playing an acoustic guitar and he'll be singing and he's got a great internal pulse, great groove. And then when people start feeling like, hey, I'm going to get in on this and the audience starts clapping and he goes, uh-uh. Yep. Yeah. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. That was just pretty funny because yep. like most entertainers- yeah wouldn't wouldn't do that but i will say that it's weird if you're on stage and you see somebody that's out of rhythm you visually you almost your brain starts making you go am i supposed to go to the, right the right right it, it, but you're playing and you're like oh, it's like yeah. you're falling over because your brain is right. twisting inside out i've seen it happen because when i've played my dad's music which has a lot of odd time stuff does, and, yeah. and people have no idea where one is uh you know, you definitely see like the odd, right? like, you know, people like they're trying. I know. And that's, you know, a lot of people don't have rhythm. It's just, it's, it, you're born with it or you're not, you know, I mean, that's, if you, if you watch, some people just cannot catch. I think they could be taught, but mm, yeah, you go to concerts and it's like, oh, geez, stop. <laughs> But I think people don't realize that it if you're on stage, the yeah, yeah. It, you oh, have to look away. Right, you know, right. Because it, it can totally change. You know, it, it's happened to me a few times. Plus, there's a delay, you know, on yeah. what you hear and what you see, too. So, 